In our previous video, we saw how to implement an async task. In this video, we're going to take a look at the onPostExecute method, but more importantly, we're going to see how we can take the data we get back from an async task and wire it up to an autocomplete task. So first of all, in the onPostExecute method, uh, we know that the plant ETOs is going to be a collection of plant ETOs that come from our background thread. So at this point, we're just using a simple stub. If we take a look at the stub, plant DAO stub, we're going to see that we're creating a white oak, an English oak, and an Eastern redbud. So for now, we want these to be our autocomplete seed data. Eventually, we'll reach out and get live data from a website, but now we're just going to use this. So to do this is, is actually quite straightforward, regardless of where the data came from. If you have any type of collection of DTOs, this is a fairly straightforward operation. So what I need to do is say uh, I need to make an array adapter. So array adapter. Now what's an array adapter? Uh, what's an array adapter? It's simply something that takes a collection of data and makes it friendly for the user interface. So array adapter, and I have to say plant DTO, uh, that's a generic identifier. I'm simply saying what this array adapter is going to hold. Alt enter, organize our imports, like so. And then we're going to say, one more try there. Okay, now we got it. Uh, now we're going to call this one plant adapter. And now we need to make it equal to something. And this is where things get a bit confusing. So I've just popped it into presentation mode because we have to call a really long-winded constructor. We say new array adapter. And once again, we provide the generic plant DTO. Now I'm going to, just to make it easier to see, I'm going to put the constructor call on the second line. Normally, if you look at the context sensitive help that's coming up on the top, you'll see we need to pass in a context object a resource ID uh, or, or some type of yeah, some type of layout ID uh, and then the collection that we want to adapt. Now normally that first argument, the context, is simply an activity. In other words, the class that we're currently in. But where, what class are we currently in? Well, it kind of feels like we're in GPS a plant, but we're actually in an inner class called plant search task. So if I say this, I'm referring to plant search task not the enclosing class GPS or claim. So in other words, normally just putting in the keyword, this will work if you're in an activity, but here we have, we are in an inner class, so we need to refer to the enclosing activity, which we can do just by saying GPS a plant dot this, and then we indicate not us as an object, but the object that owns us. Next, we need a layout, and this is just a layout on how this autocomplete is going to look. For an autocomplete text, we almost always use the same layout, which is Android, dot r dot layout dot simple list item one. That's a whole lot of typing, but it's just saying show one line at a time. And then finally, the collection we wish to adapt. So this collection is going to be plant DTOs, like so. Terminate with the semicolon. Now, uh, I'll put a comment to this effect that just says adapt the data to be UI friendly. Okay, next we need to associate the data with the auto complete text view. Let's go up and take a look. Do I already have a reference to this auto complete text view? And if I go to the top, I see there's ACT plant name, which I've brought in. Uh, I brought that in by using a butter knife. So sure enough, that is available. So back down, and I know I should be using a shortcut for my last edit location, but nonetheless, back down to here, ACT plant name. And now I'm going to say dot set adapter, and we're going to pass in our plant adapter. And really, that's all there is to it. So I'm going to go back out of presentation mode and into debug mode. But first, I just want to reinforce that last step because I did do that in a previous video. ACT plant name is a widget on a screen. To be very specific on which widget it is, let's take a look at our emulator. And it's this widget white right here. We're getting a reference to that by using butter knife, but the actual, uh, the actual ACT plant name is actually declared in an XML. There we go. Content GPS a plant. It's actually declared in an XML based layout file, as you see right here. So I click here and it might look a little bit goofy in presentation mode, but this is what I've selected is sure enough. We'll scroll up to the top here. Uh, almost to the top, 
ACT plant name and it's an autocomplete text view. So I just wanted to connect a few dots there. Now I've started the emulator and we know that in the onCreate method when it's actually rendering the screen for the first time it's going to kick off this plant search task. The plant search task is going to do the do and background method. Now one thing I will note is that the screen has rendered because remember the do and background method is running in a separate thread. So the screen has rendered, but if I scroll up towards the top, we know the on post execute has not executed yet, so we have not actually populated the autocomplete yet. So if I start typing Eastern, nothing's going to happen. Okay, so we go back and we take a look. We, uh, we F9 through this and we see on post execute comes up and we see that these lines are executing successfully. Just to confirm, when I mouse over plant DTOs, I see three results, white oak, red oak, uh, white oak, English oak, eastern redbud. So sure enough, we are getting data in and this plant DTOs is populated. So I choose F9 and let's go back and let's see if the autocomplete works yet. So I'm going to delete eastern and ah, there we go. Circus canadensis eastern red oak, red, redbud. If I type in oak, we get English oak and white oak. So we see with an array adapter and a little bit of magic, uh, we are able to get the uh, we are able to get our autocomplete populated. Now you might wonder how did it know what to show in the autocomplete? How did it know to show Eastern Redbud, uh, White Oak, and Quercus alba, and all that stuff? It's showing that the default behavior of that uh, of that component is to invoke to string on whatever object is passed to it. So the object that's passed to it is a list of plant DTOs, but specifically it's going to iterate over the list and it's going to invoke to string on each of these plant DTOs. In the next video, I want to show you what happens when you do not override to string because it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, but that wraps up this video. Hope this was helpful. I look forward to seeing you in, in the next. Thank you.